Hey, my name is Ben. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm working on a walk-in freezer condensing unit and I'm going to be adding some Freon to it. Just wanted to step you through the process that I use uh, to do that. So first things first, we are going to take our low side gauge and connect it to the low side of the compressor. The low side is going to be the larger size pipe or usually the one that is insulated. So right here, uh, this type of connection, I'll show you how it works really quick. Uh, this is basically a valve that I can fully shut off um, or open obviously so if um, and the way this works is typically it's all the way open like this so I've got this all the way open and even a little bit of pressure in order to keep it um, anyway so when this is all the way open this uh, port is actually closed so you will not have any uh, access to the system until you take and just slightly close this valve just unseat this basically just about that, like that, and that's all you need to do in order to open up this port uh, to the compressor. So now that we got that that connected there, uh, we're gonna take our uh, middle gauge here, the yellow yellow tube uh, that we're gonna be connecting to our Freon tank. But before we do that, uh, we're gonna go well. We're gonna go ahead and put this on here and just to get it started like that, so it's still loose, and then. We're going to want to bleed the air out of these lines because there's uh, probably some air that has gotten into the lines from the gauges. And so we're going to go ahead and open this uh, just a little bit. Just enough, just long enough to bleed the air out of the lines. That should be adequate. You don't want to, you don't want to uh, leak Freon into the atmosphere. So you just do it enough to get the air out of the line. And then you go ahead and tighten that fitting up and now we're ready to open the valve on our tank. In this case we are adding R22 so we're going to go ahead and open this now and next we're going to turn the jug upside down so now this is upside down here you want to make sure that your hose is hanging uh, freely and not pressing up against anything too immediately after it comes off the tank uh, because we are going to weigh the amount of Freon that we're going to put into the system. Now I'm turning this on here. This is my scale and once it turns on, if it's not automatically zeroed, I'm going to go ahead and zero it, but it is already zeroed. Otherwise you'd press the tear button to make the display go to zero and then as the Freon is released from the jug, we will see an accurate representation of how much Freon we're putting into the system. Now the next thing we're going to do is turn the, turn the system on. In this case it's just low, it's not completely empty. Uh, but you never want to add Freon unless the system is running, and you want to add it at a very slow rate. Also the reason the jug is upside down is because then it charges as a liquid and you're going to get a consistent mixture of the refrigerants that are in that jug. Uh, this is R22, but uh, there are a lot of different types of Freon that have multiple types of Freon that are mixed into it, and if you charge it as a gas, it it won't charge correctly so you need to charge as a liquid just always have your drug upside down so that your charging is liquid so now we're going to go ahead and fire the unit up and then I'm going to add Freon to it at a slow rate so that we don't accidentally introduce liquid directly into the compressor we want to slowly let it come in so that it's as a gas even though we're charging as a liquid as long as we let it let it through slow enough it won't be affected by the liquid because it'll have time to evaporate before it reaches the uh, compress compression stroke of the compressor. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get this thing fired up. Let's see if this is ready to go. The unit is running. We can see that our pressure is, is dropping here. So we know that. Uh, We are ready to add. So we're going to go ahead and crack this valve open. You can actually see the liquid in the sight glass. You watch see the liquid. So we're going to just so there it just cut out because it dropped below the pressure switches setting but now it'll cut back in once it gets up above a certain pressure 
we're going to wait until it cuts back in uh, to start adding Freon again so that we don't flood the compressor. Basically, uh, we're going to keep charging this unit until all those uh, gas bubbles in the, in the uh, sight glass go away. I'll see if I can get a better shot of it. So basically that's it. You're going to continue to add refrigerant uh, until all of the bubbles are gone from that sight glass in the, this type of system. Uh, systems, I'm assuming that you're going to do your own research on how different systems need to be charged, but this is how this particular one uh, goes. So you have to be really careful with making sure that you're charging correctly, that you're taking superheat and subcooling into account if you need to, depending on the type of system. So I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please subscribe to the channel, and uh, I'll do my best to continue to share helpful and relevant videos on a regular basis. And I will also uh, leave a link in the description uh, to a similar uh, set of gauges as to what I'm using, the digital gauges, as well as the, the digital refrigerant scale. So uh, obviously once I'm done charging it, I'll have my exact pounds and ounces for refrigerant, so I'll know how much uh, to record on the invoice. So thanks again for watching and we'll talk to you in the next video.